the cancer plague has risen parallel with the environmental deluge of synthetics. Thousands of medical, industrial, military, agricultural chemicals which have all appeared onto the market through the same channel. Safety tests on animals. The Journal of American Medical Association in 1975 states that it had been established that men, man is 60 times more sensitive to thalidomide than the mouse, 100 times more than the rat, 200 times more sensitive than the dog, and 700 times more sensitive to thalidomide than the hamster. And those are all species that are very popular with animal experimenters. So what we draw from that is this. Today, if thalidomide was trying to be marketed by some scientists to go on, on, on to general release, the weight of evidence from animal experiments was suggested, yes, thalidomide is perfectly safe to use. Since thalidomide, all drugs and thousands of other chemical substances which find their way into the environment have been tested on animals in an attempt at avoiding human birth defects. In the wake of this increased animal testing, in the five years to 2002, birth defects have risen by 50%, with one in 16 babies now being born having some type of defect, according to the Birth Defects Foundation. Medical advances have also been delayed for many years due to reliance upon animal experiments. But it is not just pharmaceutical drugs which are damaging human health. Hundreds of thousands of combinations of medical, industrial, military and agricultural synthetic toxins are in the air, ground, water and food, killing and poisoning people, animals and the environment alike. Many of these chemicals reach the market through fraudulent tests of safety and efficiency on animals. Since America's war on cancer in the 1970s, based largely on animal research, the disease has rocketed. In the Western world, it now afflicts 40% of the population, with the World Health Organization predicting that cancer is likely to increase by up to 50% worldwide by 2020. In cancer research, a previously healthy but frightened rodent, rabbit, dog, cat, whatever, is subject to various procedures which produce artificial tumours. These tumours have nothing whatsoever to spontaneously occur in human cancer. They then proceed to suppress or remove these tumours with petrochemical synthetics and they will tell you with a perfectly straight face that this nonsense is cancer research. According to Dr. Erwin D. Bross, PhD, former director of biostatistics at Russell Park Memorial, from a scientific standpoint, animal model systems in cancer research have been a total failure. They not only kill animals, they also kill humans. There is no good factual evidence to show that the use of animals in cancer research has led to the prevention or cure of a single human cancer. In the ancient wisdom, Morley Stainer wrote, Still the money pours in for cancer research from kind-hearted, well-meaning people. In spite of the fact that the much advertised cures and discoveries invariably turn out year after year to be no cure at all, but rather an aggravation of the trouble. The proof of this being the steady increase of the disease on all sides. The public still does not realise that nothing is likely to happen, no progress even possible, whilst the research is done on demonstrably wrong lines. The critical point about this quote is that it is from the year 1940. Essentially, the situation is the same as it was 66 years ago, except, of course, for the massive increase in cancer statistics. Although the causes of most diseases are well known, practically no money is allocated to their prevention, the most obvious and beneficial route to take, except to the drugs, chemical and medical establishments, that is, there is no money to be made from a healthy population. The only direction we can go in if we are to reverse this ever-encroaching tide of disease is through disease prevention, and when health has broken down, by engaging in genuine clinical research methods, truly applicable to human beings and their health problems. This is, of course, the opposite direction to that which we are going now, 
which relies on the ludicrous attempt at creating artificial sickness in once healthy animals. However, it is an unfortunate fact that many people, taken in by a relentless stream of propaganda from an industry beholden media, are convinced that the solution to the diseases plaguing mankind is through animal experimentation, and that the whole argument is one of animal rights versus human rights. Unfortunately, it is, however, a fact that those who benefit from vivisection's continuation are very happy with the notion of animal rights, knowing full well that this in no way challenges the existence of vivisection, and that the vast majority of people will always put human beings before animals. Indeed, it's common to hear the defenders of vivisection ask, which is it to be, the health of these sick babies, or the lives of a few dirty lab rats? And this, for most people, is the end of the discussion. The genuine anti-vivisection movement, however, refuses to get caught up in this endless moral debate, knowing full well that there are sound scientific, medical, environmental and economic arguments against vivisection, arguments that if made common knowledge would swiftly bring about its total abolition. It also refuses to get caught up in any discussions about alternatives to animal experiments. There can never be any alternative to something as fundamentally useless and misleading as vivisection. The only true alternative is the total abolition of vivisection and its replacement with genuine research methods that in no way can be compared to the sham of animal experimentation. <laughs>